It's been a lot, been a lot. <laughs> but let me see if I can get up here. I gotta get another 100 foot and run that for both of the cameras all the way back over there. All right, so thankfully, whoever hung the TVs left me a pull string right there and one right here and has a low voltage box that I can pass everything through. So I'm gonna tie off the ethernet for the PTZ that I'm gonna put right here and both of the 100 foot fiber HDMI cables. One is gonna have the source on this end, which is gonna be for the PTZ and then the other one is gonna be for display for the TV. And I'm gonna tie all this stuff off so that when I climb up to pull up the extra cable over there, I can just knock all of this out at the same time and not avoid multiple trips in the attic. All right, I got almost all my cables over here except for the one for the PTZ. Um, got the ethernet cables that's gonna send power to both of them all the way back here. Only thing technically I gotta do now is push the cable through here for both of the cameras because I was able to drop them right there hook those TVs up and then run one more cable but the good thing is that cable is going to come here and go down um, for that's the PTZ so let me terminate these cables as well as the um, SDI converter which I left up there so this is going to be similar to how we did it at Signs and Wonders. Um, have a HDMI to SDI converter and then convert it back for this side. And where did I put it? No, right there. So there was already an HDMI to SDI converter on the other side, but it has two SDI outs. So we're just going to connect that to here. And this is, if you can get in focus, this is a SDI to HDMI. That is what's going to feed the HDMI splitter here that will go to all the TVs. All righty. One camera powered with video and back TV is connected. I need to pull that one up, hook that one up, get the cable here. Um, and then go for mounting the other PTZ here. Then I'm going to concentrate all the rest of my work back there. Now I will need to get a brush plate on there. So I'm going to have to disconnect everything and run everything through the plate. But that's simple compared to everything else. I'm going to wait. Let's go mount this to the camera now. Oh my gosh, folks, this is a look of tiredness, but boom, we got an image. Got an image. Yay. So that's the Coax that's going all the way down is from a splitter coming up here. Yay. So now, actually found the hole that cable is going through maybe 15 feet away from the booth. So now I just got to go up there one more time, push over the camera HDMI cables. And both of them are up. There's the other one. That one was already there. Just got to hook that up. And outside of some, I need to get a plate to cover that up. He's done. He's done. <laughs> Alright folks, I am heading to the store because I need to get that pastry plate. But folks, we is done. Cameras are working. Everything is wired. I need to get some conduit to go in the media booth and then we're just going to tackle a couple of audio issues. Um, connections, not issues. But then start doing some training. Um, at two and then we're up out of here. Alrighty folks, we are done. Let me take you on a quick tour of everything that we've done here at Zionchester AMZ because I was corrected on the naming on that. Alrighty, so we got ourselves a SMT AV20X PTZ here in the front. We got it in white. Obviously, to match everything inside of the sanctuary. Got a little conduit there. All of the cables are fiber HDMI that are running here. Two coming up, uh, and a third one going directly from here all the way back. 
So what we got back here, we integrated the X32 rack mount into their existing system, which was rack mounted as well. We just literally just replaced it, hooked up everything exactly the same way. But before we get to that, another um, SMT AV 20X PTZ hung upside down, um, just so it won't block all the cables or pass through for this TV. PoE switch, um, power for both of the cameras, front and back, and HDMI. All of that for the TVs comes back here. In here, here's our PoE switch. This hooked up to our surge, surge protector. And this is the master switch to kill everything. That's sending power and bringing internet access over there. The X32 is connected as well over the network. Right there, that's how it can be controlled. And on the other side, we ran a um, coax cable, SDI cable, and that's what's bridging the gap between the run all the way in the media booth and the other area back here. So SDI to HDMI converts over. That's what sends to this one by four HDMI splitter. And that's what's powering all the TVs in there. And it's a whole lot of cables. If I had my way, I would shorten them, but hey, we're not doing that. Um, what else? We do have another cable up here just like they had before if they wanted somebody to come in and hook up their phone and play audio it's there so that's fine all right um, i think that's pretty much it that we had everything is right here and we ran it right behind there that was the easiest way because it got a lot of access to get the cables there now we did run an existing ethernet last time we were here and that really saved us um, as well. Let me close this up. Oh, turn the light off. Hold on. All right. <laughs> Working backwards, make sure everything is done. All right. But I was saying the cables we ran saved us from that. The main internet is right here. So all our extra lines plugged into here, into the router here, I'm blocking all the info. Um, and that's how it's getting the internet. Everything else is running this way, through the brick wall, up and over. And this is their current setup while they're in here, which shows the exact same thing. So it will function as an overflow as well too. Make sure you give me a shot on the best You say get you a shot. I mean, I'm on recording right now. The best aid he has anywhere in the world. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, because we, we did run everything in the wall when this was open, but we're kind of running low on space. So we just put a conduit in here for those three cables. The two HDMIs coming from the PTZ and the coax is going back. Everything is ran here. Now, the other thing we did, that extra cable that we have ran, we actually have the audio running separately. Originally, the audio would come over here into the sound system inside of here, which would require the sound system being on. But we have a secondary line in that's coming directly from the board, which I'm gonna do a video because a lot of y'all asked me about this and I've done it before. But for the X32, we have a main mix coming out of the RC8 outs. Convert that with a Balin to a Cat6. The Cat6 is the one that we ran originally all the way back there and that's connected directly into the A2 Mini Extreme into mic input two. So when they're on this side, everything is mic one that gives all the mics and audio on this side. When they go into the sanctuary on Mother's Day, they will go to mic number two, and that is gonna be solely that side. We would only turn on, um, we would never turn on both at the same time, because um, then you would have a loop back audio going back on. But let's see what else we got here. No, I'm not, not yet. Yes, I am. We got the, <laughs> we got our PoE um, PTZ controller here that's connected to both the cameras. Got everything routed into the ATEM, but it's set up exactly how it was 
um, when they were using the system originally, we just put the new cameras on three and four. So that way everything goes forward. When again, like we said, we switch over, it would go to mic number two when they're ready to be in the sanctuary and mic number one goes off. And that's pretty much it. So again, thank you so much to Diane Chester for the opportunity for calling me back again. Um, done a lot of work with them. So really appreciate the fact that they um, still trust me to do some stuff over here. So really excited to see what everybody's doing. They're loving the cameras. Um, loving the new flow of what they got and everything like that. So link is down below to everything that we used in this. We were able to do this in two days. So yay. Um, got a lot of stuff going on. So we had to knock it out because um, they needed this before Mother's Day as well too. So uh, if you like this type of content, appreciate a like, consider subscribing, hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. And I don't say it enough and I know I've been so busy so I want to apologize, but I want to thank my patrons and YouTube members for making videos like this possible. Their name's on the screen right now, and you too can become a patron for as little as $1 a month, or you can become a YouTube member by clicking the join button down below. No matter which way you pick, folks, you are helping us train and transform media ministries all over the world. Thanks for watching, folks. This is AJ. We'll catch you on the next video. Later.